Now, as some of you may have noticed, I am in a different location. Uh, I'm at home, my parents' house, in my old bedroom, um, because I'm filming Waterloo Road. Um, which will bring me on to my first question, which is, what is next for you? At the moment, I'm actually um, filming a BBC series called um, Waterloo Road. Um, and for people who don't live in England or just don't watch it, uh, it's about a school called Waterloo Road. Uh, and it, and it's just about, you know, the goings on in the school and, and whatnot. And because of copyright and spoilers and all that, I can't actually tell you the ins and outs of my character. Um, but she's uh, 14 and she's called Cassie and she will be appearing in the next series. I'm not sure when that will be yet. I think it will be next year, early next year. Um, but as soon as I know, I will post it on my Facebook. As some of you may already know, I've just been cast in Holby City as a constant character. Um, again, can't give you the ins and outs of um, the character, but she's called Holly and she will be in Holby City for some time. Um, now, I'm going to start filming that next week um, and I will be filming it until February next year, which is absolutely amazing because it's kind of seven months of, of solid work and, and that's brilliant for an actor and all that rubbish about the economy and boring things. So yeah, I'm really excited about that and uh, stay tuned. Um, it was really difficult, obviously, because I didn't feel like I'd completely created her yet and, um, you know, found everything about her that I wanted to, because um, obviously we weren't given enough time, which is a shame, actually, because I, I was really looking forward to um, continuing her journey throughout and right until the end, um, because I never, I don't, I believe as an actor that a character is never complete, like a person people change throughout their lives and although although you know the story is just repeated every day I don't believe the characters are and although you know you can't change the story obviously or the character story you can you know find things about that person every day or every time you do it so it's a shame that you know I had to leave the character so early and we all had to leave our characters so early but I think what we did while we were while we were in Spring was brilliant because we all worked together to create something that was personal and very beautiful. And we'll never forget it. So yeah, it was a shame, but I think since Spring Awakening I've been able to create and build two more characters so far. So uh so yeah, everything is a positive. What was it like doing the Hayloft scene? Wow, this is a burning question for a lot of people. Um, in rehearsal, the Hayloft scene was done very much as a choreography, and me and Nye were, you know, here, and everyone else was round the back, like they are in the actual show. And the director and the choreographer were literally sat inches from us, almost, and we literally created the scene with everyone sat around us, so it wasn't kind of a we create the scene and fit it in with everyone else and feel awkward and it's weird and oh, I don't know what to do. It was literally created with everyone and so we all felt very comfortable and we were all, you know, so supportive of each other that it was just another scene in the end. And, um, you know, and it was also done very much as a choreography in terms of the way that it was set because it was done like this movement's on this musical cue and this is on this word and so it was, it was done very much as a dance uh, and then, you know, it was mine and Nye's job to then 
build the emotion on top of that. And um, especially when we then got to technical rehearsal and we did it with, with the moving swing, which was very interesting. And it's funny, the difference between doing it on the floor and then doing it on something that's suspended in midair with ropes is scary. People have asked me, you know, what's it like, you know, getting naked? And it, I didn't really think of it as getting naked. I, I just thought of it as just part of the scene. I think as an actor, one day you're going to have to do it. Not necessarily have to, but it's going to come up. And I didn't have a problem with it because I th I've seen it in New York and I thought the, the way that it was done is very, you know, beautiful. And I think that it was just part of the show. And so it was great doing the Hayloft in the end. It was just part part of the build-up to the end of Act 1 and part of the build-up to then what goes on to happen in Act 2 because Act 2 is that big, you know, crescendo almost of emotion and, and of power. And I think without it, there's no springboard into it whatsoever. And also, if it's not done realistically, the, the rest of Vendler specifically, her story, wouldn't have the emotional depth and the emotional... Um, you know, it, but you wouldn't go on such a massive journey with it, and it, it just wouldn't make sense, and I don't think it would be as, in, as as empowering and as beautiful, because as an audience, and also as a character, we know exactly what has happened, and we are almost in a situation where we know more than the adults, which puts us almost in power, and I think the beauty of Spring Awakening is that through the Hayloft scene, and through, you know, Moritz's death, and and you know, endless scenes, you, you really, as audience, as an audience member, get dragged in and, and almost know more than the characters do. Okay, so I got slightly distracted in the time that I finished recording the last question and starting recording this question, so I'm, I'm sorry. And it's also starting to get dark. Well, I say get dark. Darker. So it's going to be another of those videos where the light slowly changes, which I apologise for. So the next question that was asked actually made me laugh a lot because it's something that I guess I get asked quite a lot actually but it was actually the wording of this question. How on earth did you manage to put on your fairy queen dress every single time without looking down? With great difficulty. I mean there must be an art to it but it's really just concentration. Um, and I must say, hand on heart, that I never ever once fell off the chair I like, you know, wobbled a couple of times, but I never actually fell. The dress fell, which was interesting, but I've never fallen off the chair. So um, I think it's just purely down to control and balance <laughs> while singing and standing on one leg. The funniest moment in Spring Awakening for me was when we had a, a lighting malfunction, um, what happened was the lighting desk, the lighting board, um, just shut down. And what happens is the backup lighting board has to take over. Uh, and it kind of just went into autopilot. And we were doing guilty ones. And it was to the point where um, I think it was just as Melchior was taking his braces down. And suddenly I was looking up at night and suddenly his face just turned pink. And I was like, what is going on? And then it just black and then it was just a complete blackout. And then the lights just started <laughs> flashing. And literally, Guilty Ones was a disco. <laughs> For that one time, one time only, Guilty Ones was just a disco. So it actually made sense because it was almost like what was kind of going on inside Melchior and Venus' heads with light, but kind of ruined the moment, I feel. But that was really funny because we had to keep a completely straight face, you know, doing that scene, as you know, most of you have seen it will know. It is just, it, it, it's a serious and emotional scene with a disco, which was funny. And, and it was just, it was so difficult to keep a straight face, but we managed to do it. And by the time we started singing, Thank goodness the light the lights had gone back to normal, otherwise I don't think I would have been able to sing the words.